JRPG fans, it's time to get excited. If you're a fan of the Suikoden series, you've probably already heard of Aoden Chronicle 100 Heroes, a new project from Rabbit and Bear Studios. A team comprised of JRPG veterans, most notably Yoshitaka Moriyama, creator of Suikoden. The core development team also includes Junko Kawano, who was part of the Suikoden 1 team as a character designer and illustrator, and who took over the series after Moriyama left in 2002. This game will be these two's first collaboration in 25 years. Two of the game's composers are Motoi Sakuraba, who is responsible for the score for any game that's called Tales of Blank, and more recently Dark Souls, and a whole bunch of other stuff, and Michiko Naruke, who did the music for Wild Arms! Sorry, I just, I love the Wild Arms soundtrack, this is very exciting for me. With six character turn-based combat pixel art sprites and 100 and some recruitable characters, more on that later, it really does feel like a spiritual successor to the Suikoden series, and true to form, they've given it a name that the Western audience is definitely gonna mispronounce. I'm going with Euden but I'll be interested to see what other wacky pronunciations people come up with for it over the next couple of years. Also, I had a go at translating it using Google Translate's Auto Language Detector, and it turns out Euden is Japanese for British oil field. <laughs> also, Chronicle. One single Chronicle. Anyway, in this video I'm going to go over most of what we know about the game so far. There's been some new stuff released since the Kickstarter hit some of its stretch goals, but I'm going to be covering that in a future video. In the first half of this video I'm going to be talking mostly about the game itself, touching on all the characters we know about, the setting, the gameplay, all that good stuff. In the second half of this video I'm going to be talking about the Kickstarter, where we're at with it, what we can expect from the project moving forward. So let's get straight into it. The continent is called Alran, described as a tapestry of nations with diverse cultures and values, populated by humans, beast men, elves, and desert people. Desert people. The wars and alliances that have shaped the land's history and its nation's borders have been fought with a mix of traditional medieval style weaponry and with magical objects called rune lenses. The word rune, obviously familiar from the Suikoden series, but we don't know much about these rune lenses yet. When asked about rune lenses in an interview, Moriyama said, Rune lenses are the base for magic power in Ayuden. They will be more complex than the runes in Suikoden and have multiple abilities. There are different ways of interacting with rune lenses and utilizing their power. Which brings me to the next in-game backstory plot point. One of the nations of Alran, the Galdean Empire, has discovered a way to amplify the magical power of these rune lenses, giving them a technological edge over the other nations in Alran. Now they're scouring the continent for an artifact that will increase their power even further. It seems that this is where the game will begin, because it's on one of these expeditions by the Galdean Empire that two of the game's main characters meet. These two, in fact. We also know that the world will be inhabited by a wide array of monsters to fight and places to explore way outside of the main plot of the game, as should be the case with any good RPG. There will be 100 characters to recruit into your army, plus any extras that the Kickstarter unlocks, and there will be a world map with a vast open sky that lets us feel how expansive the world is. We don't have any visuals of that yet, but you can be sure I'll be sharing them right here when we do. Now back to these two. The guy in red looks like the main protagonist of the game, and his name is Noah. He seems kind of like your typical angsty, hot-headed, chaotic good protagonist who will unthinkingly jump to the aid of those in need. Which is, to be honest, quite a welcome break from the silent, blank canvas style protagonist in the Suikoden series. He's from a remote village in the League of Nations, and seems like he will play a key part in sparking the war between them and the Galdean Empire when he finds an ancient rune lens. The other guy is Sane Kessling, whose temperament seems to be exactly the opposite of Noah. Somewhat cold, calculating, and clear-minded, he's a young general and a brilliant tactician for the Galdean Empire. Now you may remember that the Galdean Empire was scouring the continent for an artifact that will further increase their military power. Well, it's on one such incursion that Sane meets Noah. The two become friends and they each gain an appreciation for the other's perspective and values and stuff. However, a twist of fate will soon drag them both into the fires of war and force them both to re-examine everything they believe to be right and true. That's almost all we know about the story in the world, the rest of what we know can be found in the character description, so I'm going to touch on each of those right now. Don't worry, there's only five more. There are actually a few more than that since the Kickstarter reached some of its stretch goals, but I'm going to cover those in a future video just for the sake of this video not being a billion hours long. The next character on the roster is Marissa, a young member of the Guardians, a clan that hallows and protects the forest. 
The Guardians seem like a cool clan to me because traditionally with these like forest worshipping type clans in fantasy worlds they tend to shun technological advancement and revere traditional ways of doing things. Which is fine, but the Guardians in Euden respect and embrace the technology of the outside world and integrate whichever bits of it makes sense for them to use. I think this is a really cool take on the typical forest dwelling druid type clan and Marissa seems wholly on board with their progressive way of thinking. And I mean, look at her. She's clearly a badass and a skilled warrior magic user type, so yeah, I'm pretty excited to get to know Marissa. Next up is Leon. Like, like Liam? Or Leanne? I'm gonna go with Leon. She was born in a martial arts dojo, so she's got that quick hand-to-hand -hand combat style in her blood, and she seems like your typical spunky, high enthusiasm, impulsive hothead. She hates the Galdean Empire for invading League of Nations land, and decides that the best thing to do is to run away from her village and find the nearest big city. For some reason. Anyway, when she gets there, she hooks up with Noah and the rest of the gang. I mean, they meet up, they don't hook up. I mean, they might hook up, we just don't know yet. Next up we have Gar. No question about how to pronounce his name. He's a Beastman veteran and seems like the kind of guy who'll never say no to a good fight. He and his clan are mercenaries for hire and find themselves in high demand when war breaks out. A cool thing about the Beastman clan is that they're hired individually and not as an entire clan. So it's not uncommon for Gar and his fellow Beastmen to face each other as enemies on the battlefield. Which makes me wonder if the game will decide for you which Beastmen go to your army and which go to the opposing army, or if on each playthrough it can be different depending on what choices you make, how much money you have to bid for them and stuff like that. I don't know, that'd be super cool. Anyway, next up is Melridge, who looks to be the main military strategist. He's a young scholar who specializes in natural history and who also happens to be a genius tactician. Interestingly though, he has no love for military tactics and views warfare to be the most pointless of human endeavors. So it looks like a take on the classic reluctant genius who only joins you when they realize they have no other choice. And finally we have Mio, the stoic silent warrior. Mio is on a journey to perfect the ways of the blade and only speaks when she has something very important to say. Usually what she says is full of wisdom and straight to the point, earning her the moniker of sensei, although even the greatest of senseis do have the occasional brain fart. Okay. That's all the characters that were mentioned at the launch of the Kickstarter. Like I said, we do know about a few more now because some Kickstarter stretch goals have been met, but yeah, future video. Okay, so now on to the gameplay. It looks a lot like Octopath Traveler. At least the exploration side of it does. They've gone with sprites rather than 3D modeling and animation for the characters. The mix of classic style pixel art with 3D environments is I think a relatively new thing and I for one am fully in favor. This is the clip they gave us of Noah running around a town and doesn't it just look beautiful. And finally the combat system. From the short video we have of a team fighting some sort of sea monster, it looks like the combat is going to be based on the classic party of six. It will be a familiar turn-based system, but with enough modern flair to spice things up nicely. Obviously the attack animations look great, and we know that rune lenses will be a heavy feature and that they will be more complex and versatile than the runes in Suikoden. But we also know that there will be special AI abilities that characters can use in battle without being directly instructed to, so I guess the idea is that the characters will learn when the best time is to use these abilities, sort of by by themselves. The player will be able to customize the AI abilities of the characters so it won't be completely out of our control and this certainly sounds like an interesting feature for the battle system and I'm looking forward to seeing how it works in practice. As a way of ensuring that no characters in this huge cast get left on the sidelines, which is often a complaint you hear about the Suikoden series, there will also be heavy focus on character use outside of the main party. You'll be able to assign characters to carry out tasks in your fort or even build or customize new bits of the fort and you'll be able to put groups of characters together to go off and carry out specific tasks or search for specific resources. On top of this, we've had hints from the developers that the game will also include large-scale war battles and something akin to the dual battles, but we don't know exactly what yet uh, or how that's going to look. Again, expect updates here on this channel when we get them. That's all I'm going to cover on the actual game for this video. Like I said, there are a few aspects of the game that I haven't touched upon in this one and that I will in a future video, like the guild system, cafeteria, and cats. For now, I'd just like to touch briefly upon the Kickstarter. Now, obviously, it has smashed its early goals and the game is definitely going to be made, which is amazing. But obviously, we don't just want the game in its most basic form, we want the biggest and fullest game they can give us. And while the community's done a great job of backing the Kickstarter to meet stretch goals to unlock a whole bunch of extra content for the game, again, I'll talk about that in a future video. There are still more to be met. Just briefly, then. Goals that have already been met are... Ahem. 
Minimum target to get the game made, Fortress Town mode, console versions, cooking minigame, new game plus, new sound effects, Chinese localization, guild system, additional character Periel, fishing minigame, additional character Euphorious the Seventh, additional character Hildy, top battle minigame, and additional character Maxim. After that we have Korean localization, and then after that it's a mystery. At this point it might not be a mystery by the time the video comes out, but right now it's still a mystery, but there's still stuff to be unlocked, so let's unlock it. Wouldn't it be cool if we got four more heroes for the game, bringing the total number to 108? Not sure why, that just feels like an appropriate number. The team have said that due to the costs involved in making a game of this size, all of this extra stuff will likely be available as paid DLC after the retail release, but if you back the Kickstarter, you'll get it for free. However, we all know that sometimes developers make promises during a Kickstarter campaign that they're not always able to keep. The team at Rabbit and Bear Studios have really done their best to identify what can go wrong with this type of Kickstarter campaign and address it up front. The first is unrealistic stretch goals, promises about what will be included in the game that can't be kept because the development team can't scale to the point where they're able to take on the extra workload. Rabbit and Bear have assured us that for each of their stretch goals they have additional team members sort of on standby waiting to join and that they have thoroughly planned out the expansion of their team in the eventuality that any or all of their stretch goals are met. The second is exclusive release deals that allow developers to cash in quickly. While at the time of making this video it's unclear which publisher the team will be working with to develop the game, they have made it clear that under no circumstances will they sign anything that ties them into a console exclusive deal. Which brings us neatly to the next item, which is trying to release on too many platforms. They plan to release Aiden during a challenging time, and as much as it's likely to be during a console transition period, where many people will still have what are now current gen consoles, PS4, Xbox One, etc. But also we'll have had the newer gen consoles, PS5 and that, for a little while, and some people will have those. They have guaranteed that the game will be available on Xbox One, Xbox Series X, PS4, PS5, and Nintendo's next-gen console, assuming one exists by then. Now obviously we don't know what Nintendo's next-gen console is going to be, what its hardware requirements are going to be, but the reason they haven't promised that they'll port it onto a current-gen Nintendo console is because they want to keep the quality baseline super high and to port it onto an, an existing Nintendo console the amount of texture downgrades and code rewrites will be extensive and expensive and often when developers promise these things they aren't able to keep them because of the amount of extra work it involves. So the hope is that whatever Nintendo release next will be able to run the game at the same high quality level that the other consoles will. But if there is no new suitable Nintendo console by the time they need to start thinking about console branches, they will do their best to undergo the uh, texture downgrades and code rewrites to make it available on a current gen Nintendo console, but they haven't promised that that will be a thing that they can do. It all depends on how much funding they get from this Kickstarter. So yeah, they've really done their best not to make any promises that they don't think they're going to be able to keep. Rabbit and Bear have also guaranteed that Kickstarter backers will receive their copies of the game before retail release and that there will be a range of shipping options available for physical copies and that they'll be shipped from within the US, EU and Japan to minimise shipping costs. All in all it looks like a really well thought out and well put together Kickstarter campaign and it's got a kind of niche but very passionate community behind it. If you haven't donated to the Kickstarter yet, it's open until the 29th of August so head on over there and pledge what you can, help make this game the best it can be. I'll be keeping the AUDEN updates coming right through its development, so do subscribe if you want to be kept up to date. Also, I'm assuming if you've made it this far, you're a fan of the Suikoden series. Well, so am I. In fact, I'm a speedrunner of Suikoden, and that's got a cool community behind it, and if you want to check out what that's all about, then there's a link to my Twitch channel in the description. That's all for now then, hopefully see you next time for some more AUDEN Chronicle 100 Heroes updates. Cheers.